Hello and welcome everyone to this seating chart tutorial. I've already got an intro filmed for this video, so voice over me is going to shut up. Alright. I apologize about the filming angle of this. I can't really do much better with where things are right now, but um, I just wanted to give a little intro to this project. Uh, especially in case you haven't seen my last video, which was my wedding DIYs, DIY redos part two, which this is one of the projects that I redid for my wedding, or actually this case, I didn't redo it. I finally did it because I was originally going to do a seating chart and then I didn't. So this is based off of my wedding. Um, the names are all randomly generated. I did, however, like all these names represent someone who was a guest at my wedding. So a lot of the, the fake <laughs> names, like they have the same last name because they're based on someone at my wedding. So I didn't always do like a randomly generated last name. I would pick a bunch of last names representing people who had the same last name in my wedding. So there's lots of Davidsons, obviously, because that was based on my maiden name. So a lot of my family had that name. So Davidsons here and Davidsons there. There's Davidsons here. Just to give you an idea. So that's where the names came from. They're they're randomly generated. They're not if if there happens to be anyone with this name, you know, it's not because I was stalking you or something. I found the name on the internet. Like I used literally used a random generator <laughs> to get a lot of these names. This was done obviously on a mirror with oil-based paint. So I used oil-based paint markers. Uh, the blue and the white were done with Sharpie oil-based. This was a uh, deco color by Marvi Uchida. Actually, I have it right here. So this is that, the pink. It's like a metallic pink. That's the color paint I used. Um, and it matched kind of our colors. It was more of a navy blue, but I didn't really have that. But that was fine. Um, but you know, that's how I chose to do that. I'm gonna go over exactly how I laid everything out, like proportions and whatnot. We're gonna go over that in the video. Um, but I just wanted to give an intro on what this is. Now, this is a hand-painted seating chart, um, obviously with the paint markers. But I know a lot of people nowadays, you know, use vinyl. If you're planning on doing that, this might still be helpful for you, even though I use paint, because I'm going to talk about, again, the layout and roughly like how big you should make things. It depends on your mirror size or your surface that you're using, obviously. But I'm going to give you kind of an idea of my thought process of how I laid everything out. So, and we're going to talk about that throughout this channel, different layout. In fact, I got a video next week about layout coming out. So we'll talk about that a little more. And I might use this as an example when I'm explaining things. But basically I had like a header, a footer. I didn't do anything for the footer. And then I had margins on the left and the right. And then all of these subheadings were a certain height. And then I had the same amount. Technically there were supposed to be 10 in each. Not every table had 10 people, but there was 10 seats at each table. So it's based on having 10 seats for each one. In fact, I think only one of my tables, this one has 10. The rest of them don't. Um, in fact, this one has seven. But each name within that is also the same amount of space. And I also explain this a little bit more in the video, but I have everything aligned where everything in the center, these three tables are centered. And then everything on the right is aligned left to come towards the center. And everything on the left is aligned right to come towards the center. So, but there's still a space in between here. So that was general, what I did with the layout. And you'll see that a little bit more in the video coming up. But the other thing I want to say before I start is this is technically 
my first seating chart ever that I did. So I am, this is my beginner project. Uh, I think I did pretty well. The only, this is something like I want to do eventually. Um, I think I, yeah, like I did pretty well, pretty much. Uh, I do have a few nitpicky things. I always do. <laughs> um, there's a few names in here that I kind of maybe should have done over or done better to begin with. Like this one in particular is very small. Like I, I didn't follow the guidelines properly for this one. Like in height wise, it's small compared to the rest of them. And then this name here, you'll see me change this in the video. What I originally ended up with was this S was like way over here next to this N. And I had to like erase the first couple letters and kind of squish them in. So they are, you know, it's not lined up properly. Plus this is supposed to be a little further out. I don't know how this ended up like over and the rest of them were fine. I don't know what happened there, but I wasn't following the guidelines there either. So basically I probably should have erased the whole thing and started over, but I, I took the easy way out. <laughs> um, in general, I'm not that great at block lettering. Like I need to, I need to spend more time on it. I tend to rush through it and then stuff like that happens. So in this project specifically though, um, I did it over two different days. Well, at least the actual doing it, I did plan more ahead of time. But when I started, I did all the layout and then I did these names and then I did these as well with guidelines. And then I knew I wasn't gonna finish and I wanted to quickly figure out how the layout was gonna look like if I did these. So I wrote these in here without guidelines and it ended up being real like squished in and didn't look right because I didn't use guidelines <laughs> at all. So when I came back the second day, um, I erased these and did them over. I also erased these and did them over because they weren't quite right. But these were fine the way I left them. The only thing here, I'm not sure if I mentioned this later in the video, but um, I think I did. I was talking about this. So the problem was with this name. So it ended up being like this name, but with Junior. Um, I ended up putting the Junior underneath like this to kind of go with that name. But I could do that because I had some space under here. There wasn't any more names, like this is only eight rather than 10. So I had space to put this underneath. If I would have put it in line, it would have technically been over, like this was the starting point and it would be three spaces over because it's JR, actually it would be four, JR period plus another space. So it would have been into the margin if I would have done it in line, and if I would have squished, then I would have, because this was the longest name I had, I would have had to squish everything else, because these ended up being half inch each wide letters that I made. And I would have had to make it like a weird fraction. And I decided I'm just gonna put the junior underneath to make it easier. So that's kind of an on the fly decision I made. I think that's all I want to say for the intro. Let's get to the video. Hello, starting the seating chart today. Getting a filming angle going on here because this is kind of awkward, but I think this will work. I am kneeling right now. Um, I guess I want to talk about the layout a little bit before I do it. So here's what I calculated. This is 34 inches up and down vertical and 29 and a quarter horizontal. So first of all, one of the things I figured out is as far as we're going to have three columns because I have, I have nine tables, so that'll work out good. Uh, three columns. So to get the 29 and a quarter down to 27, I put one and one eighth inches on each side for a margin. So I'm gonna get that on here. And then, then within that, each column will be nine inches long. 
And then this is a little more complicated. Uh, actually, I have to look at my notes here. So there's going to be a header and a footer. The header is three and three quarters inches. I think that's the final one, <laughs> three and three quarters inches. And then three and one quarter down here for the footer. And then, you know, where it says table one, two, and three and stuff like that, that's going to be like another like subheading. And those are each going to be two and a half inches. And then the space for the names is six and a quarter inches. And then within that, each of the names are, I have that written down somewhere, but not here. I'll get there when I get there, but I had to figure it out. Um, I don't know where that is right now. I'll have it figured out when I get there, but I had to figure out like a name, a, a space for the name and then a space under the name. So you could have a little space in between. I have that figured out, written down probably somewhere on the thing I'm filming with. <laughs> so I'll figure that out when I get there. I'm going to put the rest of the layout on here though first and then we'll work on the rest. So let's get started with that. All right, I checked and for each of the names, it's going to be a half inch for the actual writing and then an eighth inch of a space after that. And that'll be 10 times each table, even though most of my tables didn't have 10 people, but that's how it's going to be set up. So it's all the same. So a half inch of writing, an eighth inch of space, half inch of writing, eighth inch of space, etc., etc. for each of the tables. So there'll be 10 technically on each, even though a lot of my tables didn't have 10 people in the end, but there were some that did. So they're all going to technically have 10 seats, but only some of them will be filled. So, but that's in general, the layout that you need to know. And I'm going to show you how that looks in a minute. I just want to show you what I'm doing so far on this as far as the layout goes so this is three and three quarters for the header one and one eighth on the left and right for the margin these subheaders are all two and a half inches and then this is where all the names are gonna go there's ten of them one two three four five six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's all a half inch and then an eighth inch of a spacer. So that's where all the names are going to go. 
There's supposed to be 10 per each, but again, not everyone has 10. But anyway, that's three times, so we're gonna have, th we're gonna have nine tables. So there's three columns and three rows of tables. And then there's a footer at the bottom that is three inches and a half, or three inches and one quarter, I think. And then, so that's what we got so far. And I will show you progress in a little bit. So I made a bunch of notes on here, but these are the names I'm going to use. And what I decided was that the ones in the center, in the center column there, are all going to be centered. The ones in the left column, so the ones I'm starting with over here, are going to be to the right. So they're going to be towards the center. These are going to be center, and then the ones on the right are going to be to the left. So they're all going to be kind of grouped towards the middle. I went back and forth about maybe doing left aligned and then center and then right aligned where there'd be more of a space, but this is the way I'm going to do it this time. So there are other options, like I said, but this is what I plan on doing. And so I have everything, like the center ones, I have where I'm supposed to put the center and then I have the number of spaces for the right and left. So it'll make it easier for me to figure that out and the largest one I have is 19 so if I can get us like where I can have 20 spaces in there that would be perfect or more we'll see they're, they're uh, 9 inches across so if I did half inches that would be 18 so that wouldn't work quarter inches would be too much so maybe third inches that would be 27, that would still be a lot. Unless I want to change this name a little bit, make it Mike instead of Michael. Or if I wanted to bring Junior underneath, that was the other suggestion I had myself. Then I wouldn't need as many spaces. I could do 15 like the other Michael and then put Junior because I don't have 10 in this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I only have 8 in this one. So I have room underneath to put Junior. I think I might do that. And then just do half inch each. Yeah, I think I might do that. So half inch. I made this layout a while ago and I kind of forgot what I was going to do until I looked at it again. Good thing I made decent notes. But anyway, yeah, I need to, within that, that square now, I need to put half inch kind of marks through the line so I know where the letters are supposed to be. So that's the next step that I have to do. All right. All right. BRB. There should be 18 there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Perfect. All right. So I can connect those lines down. I have a different key square. It's a little smaller. I might have to do a little bit. with a ruler or something. Or what do I want to do? Yeah, even the level I don't think I can use. All right, just do the best we can here. So I'm gonna get started on this first table to show you how to do it. I need to get my paint pens because I don't have them. I decided I'm using just a white oil-based Sharpie for the names. Table numbers I think I'm going to do in like a navy blue because that was our our uh, 
either navy blue or the rose gold one that I have for the table numbers. I haven't decided yet. But then the header will be probably one or one or the other, or maybe both. I'll figure that out when I get there. But the names are going to be in white, oil-based. So. Alright, this is the time-consuming part. I'm going to list the names here. 13. There it is. 18 spaces. So that would be 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I should start here and it should be good, but I'm going to check A, D, A, M, space, D, A, V, I, D, S, O, N. Perfect. Alright, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Daddy comfortable here because it's awkward. All right, Adam Davidson. The only thing I don't like is the D. I should have centered a little more. Maybe I can fix that. Just wet enough where I can fix it without having to put anything on. Alright, I'm gonna do that over. Oops. So I only have one space there. Okay, looks good. Martha starts at 15. It always looks better when I step back. When I'm there, it looks, like, it looks bad. I'm like, oh. is 14, four spaces. This chassis, you messed me up. Catch them quick, you can get it real easily. Excuse me. Right. If we can touch 
that up later. But instead of doing that, I could do like junior this way. Yeah, I think that's better. All right, so that's table number one. Okie dokie. On to the middle. So then I need this again. Do half marks. Is this long enough? No, it is not long enough. This is. level and use that instead. So I'm starting another day on this mirror seating chart here that's based on my actual wedding guests, although I've changed the names. I um, just want to show, so I didn't show me doing all this, but I did um, continue the guidelines for the names. And I'm going to use them now to make the rest of the names. Um, so <clears throat> I'm just going to go over this again in case I didn't put it in the video. Um, on the left side here, the ones on the left, I am making them right aligned, so they're towards the middle. In the middle, I'm making them middle aligned, so they're centered. And then the right, I'm going to make left aligned, so it's towards the middle again, so it's all kind of crunched together a little bit. And I don't think any of my middle names are too long where they're going to run into the ones. So that's what I decided to do. Um, for this one, I may do next time I do one of these and it's not a real seating chart. I may try something new, but that is what I'm doing this time. Um, I think that's all I have to say right now. So I'm just going to go in, I'm going to fill in the rest of these names, and then I'm going to do table one, two, three, etc. 
and then put something up here, whether it's find your seats or whatever. And then I might do a little bit of a design around the border. That's what I'm planning on doing. We'll see what actually gets done today. But anyway, that is how this is going. Little update. <laughs> All right, let's get started. center and the rights are aligned left. Once we erase all the lines we'll be able to see a little better. There is a couple spots where it's a little close. I should have maybe had more in the space for a margin there but it's still fine. I might put up a line. We'll see how it looks when I take it off. But now I'm going to be writing table one, two, three, etc. and then whatever I'm putting up here so I'm gonna do that next. try this pen, this marker, paint marker, it's oil based, it's a metallic rose gold, which is sort of the color, otherwise I have this other pink, which isn't really the color I want, but I'm going to see what this looks like first, because it, with it being metallic, I'm not sure how it's going to show up on the mirror, so we're going to try this, so I'll put it down, can you see, can you see, let's see, I'll put it here and then I'll erase it. I mean, I think that works good. 
already. Yeah, I'll use this. I mean, this blue technically isn't the right blue either, but I don't have like a navy blue, so that'll be fine. Um, question is, what do I want to do in the pink table? Because otherwise, table is going to be blue. I guess I could do it in white. And I think that'll, with this being blue up here, this is going to be too much, so. Probably write table in this. And then do these in blue. Or do them all in, in pink. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I think I might do it all in pink. So this is how everything looks. I'm going to erase all the guidelines and I will see if I want to add any border lines or anything like that and I might do a, a thing around the border, but we'll see about that. I'm going to see if I want any lines in between all the tables. Uh, we'll see once I erase everything. I think it's probably fine without them, but we'll see. Okay, so I erased all the guidelines. I'm going to do a little bit of touch-up work. The one thing that's bothering me, well, the most at least, is this name. I must have messed up a little bit how this was supposed to go because this is too far over. Because you can see there's a big space here and there should be the same space here with this being centered. So I'm not sure what happened there. What I'm going to do is at the very least erase this S and move it over, but I might erase the first couple letters and move them over a little bit. I could do the whole name, but I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> so that's what's bothering me most. And then I have to do a little bit of touch up, but other than that, this is pretty much done. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's a mirror and there's stuff in the background here, but I will give you a better look in a minute.
everyone. That is going to do it for this week's video. Stay tuned until the very end. I've got some bonus footage and sneak peeks for you. But first, I want to thank you, yes you, for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you found it to be helpful, use those buttons. If you want to see more, you can follow Shrush Design on social media. The links are all in the description. And if you would like to browse my online shops, I have two Etsy shops and a Fiverr account also listed below. If you are local to southeastern Wisconsin, I have even more services available, so you'll want to check out my website for that information. But wait, there's more! If you happen to be planning a wedding in the near future, I have another YouTube channel called Shrush Design Weddings, through which I discuss all of the choices you'll have while planning your wedding. And I also have another channel called Poised Pencraft, through which I teach the art of lettering, calligraphy, and some graphic design skills if you want to learn how to create your own designs from scratch and make each project truly your own. Links for both of those channels are, you guessed it, in the description. So if you're all subscribed now and ready for next week's video, I'll see you then. For now though, I'll leave you with the bonus footage and sneak peeks. Enjoy! Okay, for bonus footage this week, I've just got a few more Assistant Chaz clips. Are you having fun? Hi, little boy. Oh, you don't need to yell. You don't need to yell. Alright, so that's that. I think, I think, what do I think? Ooh, there it is. Alright, so I am starting another day on this. Excuse me. <laughs> and then for sneak peeks, not much new since last week. I don't have anything else figured out past this yet, but next week, February 15th, is going to be the Layout Basics video, which I mentioned for the last couple weeks. That is going to be involving basically making layouts for signs, although you can apply it to different things as well. And we're going to talk about, again, the basics, and part of that is going to involve talking about the math that's involved in creating your layouts. So that's what the main focus of that video is going to be about. And again, I promise it's more interesting than it sounds. And then I'm still planning on the next week after that taking a break from the main Wednesday video. However, I'm going to have other smaller videos coming out during the week, including a lot of them on Procreate, and that's going to be starting very soon, right after this video comes out. And occasionally there'll be other smaller videos that come out that aren't related to Procreate as well. And I'll have clips from videos and shorts on the channel as well, so you will have all those coming out in between, but no main video on February 22nd. As for the rest of the schedule after that, I will have that available next week in the sneak peeks. So that's it for now. See you next week with the Layout Basics video. Bye!